9.3 acid base theories. Let's move on. Let's first talk about the Arrhenius theories of acids. So Arrhenius acids, based on the Arrhenius theory, are described as follows. Arrhenius acids are substances that dissolve in water to get H plus or hydrogen ions as the only positive ions in aqueous solution. So basically, when Arrhenius acids dissolve in water, they get out um, H plus. However, I do want to add on to this definition and also say that Arrhenius acids can also get out a hydronium ion, which is written as H3O plus, just like this. Okay? So the importance of Arrhenius acids in this definition is that they dissolve in water to get H plus, which is hydrogen, or H3O plus, which are hydronium ions, is the only positive ions in aqueous solution. So Arrhenius acids will ionize or basically break apart to form ions in water that produce either hydrogen, which is H plus, or hydronium, which is H3O plus ions. I do want to note that um, theoretically hydrogen, which is H plus, exists alone. However, in reality, what's going on is that hydrogen in reality, which is H plus, um, when put in water, will actually combine with the H2O like this, like I'm writing right now, to form the hydronium ion H3O plus. So in theory, um, acids can break apart into H plus and the negative ion, but in reality, hydrogen, which is H plus, will combine with water when put in solution to get the hydronium ion H3O plus out, okay? Now, examples of Arrhenius acids are substances that dissolve in water to get H plus or H3O plus ions as the only positive ions in aqueous solution include HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, HNO3, which is nitric acid, or H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, which you can find on table K, okay? So, um, let's see an example of an acid that dissolves in water and ionizes to form H plus as the only positive ion in solution. So if you have an acid, generally it will um, ionize or break apart to form a hydrogen ion, which is H plus, and a negative ion known as an anion. So for example, HCl gas, which is an acid, will break apart into, in solution to form uh, H plus, Aq, which is the hydrogen ion, plus the anion Cl minus, which is the negative ion of this acid. Another reaction is, just like I said before, in reality, H plus will um, react with H2O to form the hydronium ion H3O plus. So let's see an example of that. In general, when a water reacts, when water reacts with an acid, what generally will happen is um, the acid will donate an H plus ion to the water so that you get a hydronium ion out along with the negative ion that was originally part of the acid. So let's see an example here. Like I said before, you have water here and you have the acid here, HCl gas, which is uh, hydrochloric acid. When you react them together, this H from hydrochloric acid HCl will be donated to the H2O, giving you the hydronium ion H3O plus AQ as one ion, and then the other ion you get out is the one that separates from this H, which is Cl minus. So as I said before, the water, water and acid react together where the acid donates an H plus to the water. Therefore, the water gains a hydrogen and becomes H3O plus, which is hydronium. And you also get the original negative uh, ion from the acid, which is usually written as generically as X to the N minus. Okay? So that's the whole idea of the Arrhenius theory of acids. They dissolve in water to get H plus, or hydrogen ions is the only positive ions, but in reality they usually combine with water to get H3O plus. They can uh, break apart or ionize in water to form the hydrogen ion H plus and a negative ion, or the acid can react with water to get a hydronium ion by reacting water with the uh, H plus, as well as the negative uh, ion, the anion in the original acid. So that's the idea of the Arrhenius theory of acids. Now let's talk about the Arrhenius theory of bases. Arrhenius bases, by definition, mean substances that dissolve in water or ionize to get OH- as, or hydroxide ions as the only negative ions in solution. So basically, Arrhenius bases are substances that dissolve or ionize in water to get OH- or hydroxide ions as the only negative ions. So the reason why this occurs is bases will dissociate or separate apart in water to release hydroxide ions, which are OH- ions. Examples of Arrhenius bases or substances that dissolve in water to get OH- as the only negative ions would include NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide, NH4OH, which is uh, ammonium hydroxide, and CaOH2, which is calcium hydroxide. NaOH and CaOH2 are two common bases listed on table L. Okay? So, uh, like I said before, generally, the aqueous solution of the base will separate into the positive ion in aqueous solution, AQ, and the negative hydroxide ion, aqueous solution, as written by the AQ in parentheses. So, yeah, just like I said, the aqueous solution of the base separates into the positive ion, 
and the negative hydroxide ion, both in aqueous solution on the other side. So for example, if you have NaOHAQ, when you um, let it, you know, break apart or uh, dissociate, meaning separate, you get Na plus Aq, since that's the positive ion here, and you get OH minus Aq, which is the negative ion here. So NaOH, which is um, sodium hydroxide, the base will separate into the positive ion Na plus and the negative ion OH minus. All right, the other example of a base that separates or dissociates in solution is BaOH2Aq, where you separate it into uh, the following. You get the two ions here are Ba2+, since that's from the periodic table's top oxidation state, and OH-, which is a negative hydroxide ion. So when you split up B or dissociate BaOH2Aq, you get Ba2-Aq as um, the positive ion, and 2OH- is Aq as the negative hydroxide ion. All I'm doing here with the two is I'm ensuring that you have the same number of OHs on, the same, on both sides. You have two here, so you've got to have a two in front here to have two hydroxide ions on both sides. Okay. Finally, um, this is a kind of a repeat of today, but it's also kind of an extension. If you react a metal with water, you will generally get a metallic um, hydroxide or a base, right? And you'll also get hydrogen gas. The one thing I want to note is when metals react with water, not only do they react to form uh, the metal hydroxide plus hydrogen gas, but the metal hydroxide splits up further into the positive metal cation, and the, um, and the negative hydroxide ions. So for example, in this example, you have um, K, which is a metallic solid, potassium, plus water, liquid, as indicated by H2O. And what happens is that the, K, the metal K knocks out one of the H's here, combining K plus with OH minus, right? And the other product you have to get here is H2, um, gas, which is hydrogen gas. The reason why hydrogen gas comes out is let's remember that hydrogen is a diatomic element, so it doesn't exist as hydrogen on its own, it has to exist as two of them put together at room temperature. So again, you react the metal with water and you get, um, the, you get uh, the metal reacting with OH, so it's K plus here for the metal ion, potassium, in the periodic table, OH minus for the negative hydroxide ion, and you get H2 as the gas that comes out. So if you so if you split up the metal positive metal ion K plus and the negative hydroxide ion, you get K plus for the first ion, OH minus for the second ion, and hydrogen gas as the other product. So basically when you react with metal with water, the, the metal knocks out one of the hydrogens, giving you hydrogen gas as one of the products. All right, the other two products are the um, metal ion, um, that you get when you combine it with hydroxide and the other and the final product is hyd the negative hydroxide ion. So basically when you react a metal with water you get metal cation which is positive plus the hydroxide ion, which is negative plus hydrogen gas which res which uh, is the result of knocking out one of the hydrogens with a metal. The other reaction I want you to know is the aqueous solution of the base obviously as I said before splits up into a positive um, the positive ion as well as the negative hydroxide ion. Okay? So just make sure you study the slide with the definition. Now let's talk about the bronsted lowry or other theory of acids and bases. So first, uh, let's define Bronsted acids. Bronsted acids, by definition, are substances that tend to donate or lose H plus uh, ions or protons. In other words, Bronsted acids are known as H plus or proton donors. The reason why... Uh, bronsted acids are known as H plus or proton donors is because they have so much H plus. Since bronsted acids are already have H plus, they can donate that H plus that they have so much of. So therefore, bronsted acids are substances that are um, proton or H plus donors. On the other hand, bronsted bases are substances that accept H plus or protons. So in that way, in short, bronsted bases are H plus or proton acceptors. The reason why uh, Bronsted bases are H plus or proton acceptors is because they don't have a lot of H plus since they're basic. So therefore, since they're basic, that's why Bronsted bases are H plus or proton acceptors by definition, whereas Bronsted acids are H plus or proton donors. So basically, any substance that donates or loses H plus ions in solution are Bronsted acids, whereas any substance that uh, gains or accepts H plus ions in solutions are Bronsted bases. The shortcut to determine what is a Bronsted 
acid and what is a bronze acid base. And the reaction is yet to pick a compound on the left side, then see what happens to on the right side. If the species on the left side, uh, the species on the left side that gains one hydrogen or has one more hydrogen on the right side is the base, whereas the species on the left that loses one hydrogen on the right side, or has one hydrogen less on the right side is the acid. So the species that gains or accepts one hydrogen on the right is the base, and the species that loses or donates one hydrogen on the right is the acid. Okay, so let's try some examples. So if you look up, uh, so if you look at this reaction, what you have is you have NH3AQ plus H2O liquid produces NH4 plus AQ and OH minus AQ. So we have to determine which species on the left is the bronze acid acid and which species on the left is the bronze acid base. So if you look, um, the species on the left, one of the species on the left is NH3, and the species that's like it on the right is NH4 plus. And going from NH3 to NH4 plus, what you should notice is that um, this species ammonia gains one hydrogen ion on when it goes to the right because it goes from NH3 to NH4 plus. So that's a, that suggests that you have one more hydrogen ion, right? So since it's a species that gains one hydrogen ion on the right. That means that ammonia here would be the bronze said base since it accepts the proton or H plus to go from NH3 to NH4 plus. On the other hand, H2O, the species on the right that looks like H2O is OH minus. So in this case, what you see is that um, what you see in this case is that uh, the the H2O becomes OH minus. So in this case, what's happening is you're losing a proton or a hydrogen ion because you're going from H2O to um, a species that has one charge lower minus one. So you're going from H2O to OH minus. Okay? So basically, uh, H2O will be the bronze acid because it's a species on the left that loses one hydrogen on the right. So therefore, it's a bronze acid because it's a species that donates and loses one proton or H plus to go from H2O to OH minus. So water here is the bronze acid. So basically, whichever species loses one hydrogen when it goes to the right, that's the acid because that's what donates the hydrogen ion. Whereas the species that gains one hydrogen ion when it goes to the right is the base because that's what accepts the H+. plus. All right, so let's try another example here. Here we have HNO3AQ plus H2O liquid produces H3O plus AQ plus NO3 minus AQ. So in this case, what we see is um, HNO3AQ has a similar species on the right that's written as NO3 minus AQ. So in this case, what's happening is that it th is that you're losing one hydrogen ion or, or you're losing one H plus to go from HNO3 to NO3 minus. Okay? Um, so yeah. Um, you're losing one hydrogen ion to go from HNO3 to NO3 minus because you have one less hydrogen here and as a charge that's one lower of minus one. So therefore, since HNO3 goes to NO3 minus, meaning it loses a hydrogen ion, it is the bronze set acid. That's because it's losing and donating one proton or H plus to become NO3 minus. So therefore, it's the bronze set acid. On the other hand, the H2O liquid here becomes H3O plus AQ. Since it's going from H2O to H3O plus, you can suggest that suggests that it's gaining one hydrogen ion because you have one more hydrogen on the right here. Since H2O is the species on the left that gains one hydrogen on the right. H2O would be the um, bronze said base because it's accepting the H plus or the proton to go from H2O to H3O plus. Okay? So in this case, HNO3 is the bronze said acid because it loses one proton when it becomes NO3 minus. And H2O is the bronze said base because it accepts or gains um, one hydrogen plus ion or proton to become H3O plus. Okay? So that's the idea there. In general, the species that donates or loses um, in a hydrogen ion or a proton is, is the Bronsted acid, and the substance that accepts or gains um, a hydrogen ion is the Bronsted base. Okay? Let's go through some sound problems. In number one, the substances that are Arrhenius acids are acids that release H plus as the only positive ions in aqueous solution. They either have H plus in the front followed by a negative ion, which I'll label as x to the n minus, or they're listed on table uh, k. So those are the two ways you can tell. If you have an H plus in front followed by a negative ion in the form of x to the n minus, or if they're on table k. So in this case, um, the only ones that are Arrhenius acids are 
CH3COH, HBr, and H2CO3 because they release H plus as the only positive ions in aqueous solution. This one you can tell is an acid because you have an H plus in front followed by the negative ion Br minus. This one you can tell is an acid because you have um, H plus in front followed by the negative ion CO3 2 minus. This one you can tell is an acid because it's on table K listed as um, as uh, acetic acid, which you can look up on your own. Okay. Number two, which of the following substances are Arrhenius bases? Let's remember Arrhenius bases are substances that release OH- as the only negative ions in solution. How you can tell they're Arrhenius bases is if you, is if you have um, a positive ion in front, which I label with N to the N plus generically, followed by an OH- minus at the end. So you have to have a positive ion followed by an OH- minus at the end for it to be an Arrhenius base because they release OH- minus as the only negative ions. So another thing I want you to know is that aside from... This, the other way you can tell that you have an Arrhenius base is if it's on table um, L, which lists, lists the common bases, right? So the only two uh, Arrhenius bases in this list are NaOH and BaOH2 because barium hydroxide is listed as a common base on table L as barium hydroxide, and NaOH is also listed as a common base as sodium hydroxide because they release OH- as the only negative ions in aqueous solution. They also are the only uh, cho choices from those lists that have a positive ion in front and OH minus ion in the back. In BaOH2, you have Ba2 plus in front from the periodic table and an OH minus ion in the back. For uh, NaOH2, you have the positive ion Na plus in the front and OH minus in the back. Okay? So that's the idea there. And number three, uh, the Arrhenius theory can be used to explain the behaviors of many acids and bases because it, obviously it's used to define acids and bases in terms of the ions they release. Okay? Uh, Sample problem two, let's just remember, according to the other theory of acids and bases, which is the Bronsted theory, acids are H plus donors, meaning they uh, donate hydrogen ions, and bases are H plus acceptors, meaning they accept or uh, gain hydrogen ions. And number two, according to the other acid-base theory, we have to decide what NH3 molecules act as. They, the, if you look, NH3 goes from NH3 to NH4+. Since they go from NH3 to NH4+, what you see is that they're gaining a hydrogen ion because they're going up in charge by 1 from 0 here in NH3 to plus 1 here in NH4. They're also um, gaining a hydrogen since you're going from 3 hydrogens in NH3 to 4 hydrogens in NH4. Since you're gaining or accepting hydrogens, the answer choice here would be that NH3 is a base in this example because they accept hydrogen ions, H plus ions. That's how they go from NH3 to NH4 plus. Like I said before, let's remember that how you can tell in a shortcut whether something's an acid or a base based on the other theory is if it goes up by one hydrogen ion, it is a base. But if it loses, goes down by one hydrogen ion, it's an acid because it donates if it's an acid. Whereas if it's a base, it accepts a hydrogen ion. Okay? And number three, same idea. We have to decide whether it's an acid or a base. So HNO2's role can be defined based on what happens to it. HNO2 loses one hydrogen ion to go to NO2 minus, obviously, because you're going from HNO2 to no H with an NO2 minus ion only. So obviously, to go from here to here, you're losing one H plus ion, meaning that should suggest you donate it, right? Since you are losing one hydrogen ion, that's just that HNO2 is an H plus donor. Since it's an H plus donor, we can define it as being an acid in this reaction because it donates or loses one H plus to H2O to become NO2 minus. Okay? Now let's go over sample problem three. Uh, in number one, it says, which ion is represented by X if you react H2SO4, which is an acid with water, which is H2O to produce XAQ and SO4 2 minus AQ. So let's remember that when you react an acid with the water, you usually get a hydronium ion, which is H3O plus, as a result of the acid donating H plus to water. You also get, as a result, the uh, negative ion from the acid, since the H plus is now separated from the negative ion which I'll write generically as x to the n minus. So here, if you have H2SO4 reacting with H2O, it should produce not only this negative ion from the original acid H2SO4, which is SO4 2 minus, but also hydronium, which is H3O plus. Therefore, the ion represented by x should be written as x equals H3O plus. Because when an acid reacts with water, acid donates an H plus to water to get you H3O plus, and the only thing that remains in the acid now, now that it's donated H plus, is the negative ion in the acid, which is X to the N minus. Okay? Now, number two, it says, um, what is the formula of the missing product here? You have Ca, which is a metal, reacting with water, which is 2H2O, 
to produce Ca to the 2 plus a metal ion plus 2 blank plus hydrogen gas, which is H2 gas. Let's remember that when you react a metal with water, um, generally the metal will knock out one of the um, H's in water to form hydrogen gas, which is H2 gas. And then the metal will pair up with the remaining hydroxide or OH minus ion in the water, giving you a positive metal ion and a negative hydroxide ion OH minus. So basically a metal, which, is, which I'll abbreviate with M, reacts with water, which is H2O. As a result, you'll get the metal cation or the me positive metal ion M to the N plus, depending on what the metal or positive ion is, plus a negative hydroxide ion OH minus, plus hydrogen gas. So based on this um, general formula that you should memorize for uh, base reactions, what you should understand is that you have a metal here and water here. So as a result, because the CA knocks one of the H, H's out, you get H2 gas. In addition to that, you get the positive metal ion CA2+, plus, which is in the base now. And you should also get an OH- minus ion, which is also in the base. So this blank, or the missing product, would be OH-. minus. Because as I said, when a metal reacts with water, you get a positive metal ion plus a negative hydroxide ion plus hydrogen gas. Okay? So that's the idea there. So just remember these two reactions from 1 and 2. Acid plus water will produce hydro hydronium ions, H3 plus, as a result of the acid donating its H plus to the water. What is the only thing that remains in the acid would be the negative ion in the acid, which I'll write as X to the N minus. So remember that. Also remember when a metal reacts with water, the metal knocks out one of the water water's H's, giving you H2 gas as one of the products. In addition to that, you also get the positive metal ion that forms when you make a base, which you write generically as M to the N plus, based on the um, positive metal's ion's charge. You also get uh, the negative hydroxide, which is the other part of the base, OH minus. Okay? So just remember that. These formulas for uh, reactions of acids with water and with metals with water to form a base and hydrogen gas. Okay? Number three, it says compare and contrast bronzed acids and bases. Bronzed acids donate H+, plus, while bronzed bases accept H+. Plus. Remember, remember, sorry, bronzed acids will donate or lose H+, plus ions, whereas bronzed bases will accept or gain H+, plus ions. Okay. Finally, complete these homework questions on your own, uh, including these checkpoint questions which have popped up throughout this video for the next class. Thank you very much.